Hey everybody, this is Kirsten here. Thank you so much for joining me on this brand new episode of the Balanced Vibes podcast, where today we are talking about your hormones and why it may seem like your hormones are out of whack, so to speak. So many women say that, you know, I have these new symptoms, I don't feel really well. Some of the symptoms might be, you know, I'm really bloated, I don't feel like myself, I have brain fog, I'm tired a lot. I'm more irritable, so it must be that my hormones are just crazy out of whack. Or they may find that some of the things that you used to do before in order to lose weight and in order to lose body fat are not working for them anymore. And they may be actually going in a complete opposite direction, where now instead of losing weight and, and fats, they are actually gaining it. And what they do or what they used to do previously to get that body weight down was to do lots of high intensity training and also seem to be like every diet they try, you know, at least the first two or three seem to work well and then they stopped working. And this is how it is with diets because your metabolism adapts when you are eating very low calories and uh, you just start eventually storing body fat. So. They're saying, you know, I'm doing everything the way I used to do before, but things just don't work anymore. I'm frustrated and must be my hormones. Those, those must be totally out of whack. And what I want to tell you today is that, yeah, they probably are out of whack. But more importantly, we have to figure out why they are out of whack. Because hormones don't go out of whack, so to speak, randomly. It is so tempting and so easy to say all these changes and all the things that are not happening for me that I want to see, um, they're not happening because of my hormones. And it puts you in this very um, kind of like a um, disempowered or a kind of victim mindset, I feel like, because it sounds like your hormones are telling you how you should be doing. But in fact, it's actually the other way around. Like you are telling your hormones what to do based on your lifestyle. And of course, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying that there cannot be things that are kind of hidden and that should be you know, tested. Absolutely, there are. But I'm talking about people who have done a lot of um, intense training, have been dieting a lot, have been maybe cutting their carbs really low, have this very, very highly stressful lifestyle. They hardly ever sit down and breathe and sit down to eat. When I'm talking to a person like this, then in my opinion, it's very clear to see what's going on. And your hormones, yeah, are out of whack, but it doesn't, it isn't because there is something crazy going on that you don't have any control over. It's more likely that it has, it is your lifestyle that has caused this. And sometimes I've even had people tell me that, you know, I understand, you know, the whole strength training and getting stronger and eating enough thing that you are talking about. But you know what? My symptoms are so weird. So I actually decided I'm going to get tested and see if I'm not in perimenopause. Maybe this is the reason. And that's what, you know, my hormones are out of whack, right? And my question here is, and then what? Right? Let's say that you do get tested and you do figure out that you're in perimenopause. Then what? The lifestyle changes that you have to make are still the same, right? It, whether you are or are not, because if you are depleting your body and you've done this for a long time and you are not really taking care of yourself in the right way, then the things you have to do in order to get your body healthy again, and if you have a fat loss goal to start seeing fat loss results, are still the same. You still have to start lifting weights and you still have to eat that maintenance and really restore your energy and re recover uh, your body from all this stress that it has been under. So the tests, yeah, they're fine, but also lifestyle first. And I just want to mention here too, you know, uh, years ago when I went through um, hypothalamic amenorrhea where I didn't have periods for a very long time because I was just so overtrained, I got tested for so many things. And I remember... The testing was even so uh, so thorough that they actually kept me in a hospital overnight to really test everything. And I think I was in my early 20s. I was probably like 24, 23, 24. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. This is like, you know, it's weird. My periods just went away. And nobody really asked me about my lifestyle. And had they asked me and heard that I'm running fasted like every day, like 90 minutes every single morning, and I'm barely eating or I'm eating just like, pasta with some tomato sauce on it, uh, then they, you know, that would have maybe given them some idea what's going on, but they did not ask that. They asked me to show their food log, uh, my food log, which I did, 
but they they didn't say that there's anything wrong with that. So nobody was actually digging deeper into what was going on uh, with me and what could be the reason why my periods were missing. So I understand right now you probably don't have that pro problem where your periods are missing, but you may have another symptom that is also caused by overtraining, you just doing too much and being under a lot of stress. And you might be thinking, yeah, you know, it's my hormones, my hormones. Yeah, okay, you can get them tested, but what you have to do to come out of this really depleted state are still um, lifestyle changes, right? Your lifestyle has caused your hormones to go crazy. And this is how it was for me too when I had um, AJ. And even though right now I don't really uh, work almost at all with uh, uh, women with AJ, I do work very rarely. Um, if somebody really is very interested in it and I can tell the person is 100% uh, ready to do this and super committed because I don't have the time or desire to start convincing anybody that they need to get their period back. If they know that they want to do this, they're ready to dive in, then we do this. And so just recently, uh, I actually working with somebody who said, you know, uh, my my family member was really supportive and, and wanted me to, you know, uh, go to the U.S. She's not in the U.S. and go to the U.S. and, uh, you know, pay the most expensive doctors and uh, run the most uh, best, you know, whatever tests, uh, but, you know, to figure out what's going on. And I told her, you don't need those tests. You don't need, because when we look back at your history, you've been eating low carb diets, you've been eating keto, uh, you have been running like crazy. You have all these things that point exactly in one direction, overtraining, undernourishing, then you don't need big testing. You just need to make lifestyle changes. And sure enough, four weeks later, this woman had a period because of the lifestyle changes that we implemented. So like I said, your case is probably not hypothalamic amenorrhea. And in general, I don't want to spend too much time on this topic because like I've said many times, this is like a thing past for me, but you may have another symptom that, you know, the overtraining and just depleting your body, uh, asking too much of it, can manifest differently. So in your case, it might be weight loss resistance, fat loss resistance. In your case, it might be like uh, uh, lots of bloating. You feel like terrible all the time. It can also be hair loss. You can just feel like feeling slow and sluggish all the time and you never feel like you get going. And like I said, the, the biggest thing that I see in many women who have been under a lot of stress is that eventually they hit this weight loss plateau where nothing that they have tried before and were successful at is working anymore. So let's talk about your lifestyle. Uh, look at your lifestyle and ask, really ask yourself these questions um, before you decide that you have to, you know, go to a doctor and then do all this testing. And, you know, again, I want to make sure that you know that these tests may have time and place, but let's first look at your lifestyle and see if you can figure out something already there. So for example, uh, let's look at how have you been working out? Have you been working out mostly doing cardio training or have you been doing cardio plus strength so that now you're doing both of them, maybe like four times a week. So you're doing four cardio sessions, you're doing four strength training and you never really recover. Maybe you go on long walks on top of that. Is that what you have been doing? And even more, have you been working out fasted all the time? Or maybe uh, you've, been, you've been powered by a cup of coffee or an energy drink, because otherwise you just cannot get going. And then we have this like high, high cortisol state, and you can only imagine what it does to your adrenals, and, and you're just gonna feel like crap, and you're gonna get probably one of these symptoms that I'm talking about, whether it is weight loss resistance initially, whether it's cycle issues, hair loss, uh, there is a whole, uh, whole list of things that can happen. You can just tell that the body's out of balance. So how have you been working out? The second question, have you even had rest days? Are you even doing anything to recover? Or are you on the go all the time, seven days a week, thinking of rest, rate. rest days are for weak people. Uh, the more I do, the better I get, because this is not the right approach. Your body needs to rest. Because think about it, if you're always training more, training more, training more, when are you building? You're not building because your body is in a constant recovery mode. And just today on one of my calls, I actually gave somebody an example, uh, which is, you know, when you cut your finger and then you keep cutting it and you keep cutting it every day, you cut it. So can it heal? It cannot heal, right? It's always trying to recover. And it's just the same thing here. Now, the next question, ask yourself, how is my sleep routine and sleep hygiene? Are things going uh, well there? Am I, you know, making my room dark? Am I going to bed at a reasonable, reasonable time? Am I keeping my lights low at night? Am I doing all these things or am I like watching TV super late at night and that stimulates my, my brain and uh, keeping me up and super stimulated because this is a big one too and sleep matters more than I 
feel like we we are talking about. Um, I know that <clears throat> I know that for a lot of moms, this is difficult. It can be difficult because you know the kids could be keeping you up, and then the other thing that I hear actually frequently from my clients is that. The late that late night is actually the only time that they have for just for themselves and I and it's hard to go to bed when you're like ah oh, finally have this like one hour just for me and I don't have to talk to anybody and like serve anybody and give anybody food I can just be there with myself in complete silence or with my favorite show so I I get that even though I'm not a mom I understand why you need because I understand it because I'm a very much a person who needs like quiet time like our house is very very quiet all the time so uh it would be very stressful for me too if there was like a lot of stuff going on and somebody also always like asked you something and needed something so i get it that for moms this is a big deal but can you still make a little bit of adjustment because understand that sleep if you're really sleeping only five or five and a half hours it's very stressful in the body you don't recover well and then on top of that you're trying to do the workout um, probably not going to feel great and the muscle building and the fat loss will be slowed down your cortisol will be high your stress will be high and this is definitely not an ideal environment um, for for your hormones to function optimally now the next question to ask yourself is are you always in a calorie deficit and this is so many women who are in a calorie deficit. If you don't know uh, if you are in a deficit or not, make sure that you get my Lean Ladies Calorie Protein and Workout Guide. You will figure out exactly what your maintenance calories are. And if you are eating less than that level, then yes, you are in a calorie deficit. Of course, calorie deficit is fine. And it's the only way if you want to lose body fat, but it should be a short period of time, which is something I talk about here all of the time. But uh, if you didn't know this, now you know. And if you are always in a calorie deficit, you've been there for months and months and sometimes even years, this is stress on the body. And this is what big time is going to throw your hormones out of whack. In fact, every time you are in a calorie deficit, deficit even when it's reasonable, even if it's like controlled fat loss phase that doesn't last more than six, sorry, three months, even then your hormones downregulate. So there are hormonal shifts happening already then but if it's controlled, then if you know when to come out of it, you're going to be successful at your fat loss. But if you keep going on and on and on and on, you keep cutting calories and keep um, keeping yourself in the deficit, then this will throw your hormones out of whack, so to speak. The next thing is, are you low carb? Because it's major, it's really big. It has been shown that it can be for women very bad for their thyroids, very bad for the stress levels. And um, of course, adrenals and thyroid, I mentioned that already. Uh, why are you not eating carbs? This is the story that carb, low carb is the way uh, to quick fat loss, but it's also really unhealthy. It really is. I mean, we can talk what is low, right? But uh, I personally don't have um, anybody eating less than 100 grams of carbs everybody's eating more absolutely 100 percent everybody but now when i hear about diets where uh your carbs are only 25 grams per day this is crazy and this is really something that throws your um, throws your hormones out of whack so to speak and even that you know the 100 100 grams that i mentioned that's the bare minimum no even that like i have many clients who are eating like 200 and 250 grams of carbs 100 might be or 120 might be for for somebody who was at a really low um uh, body weight already is a smaller person and uh, is maybe not super active or is in a fat loss phase. So this is time maybe you go to like 120 or so, but generally speaking, uh, I don't, I don't go uh, lower than that. And like I said, many of my clients are in 200s, 250s, and some of the really active ones with higher muscle mass, even, um, even uh, in the beginning of 300s. So carbohydrates are healthy for you. This is a total myth that you shouldn't be eating them. You probably notice that you're gonna feel like total crap. That's because your hormones, quote unquote, are out of whack. They do go out of whack if you restrict your carbs in such a big way. Then next thing, when we talk about working out, I already talked about, are you stressing yourself too much? Are you doing too much cardio? And have you been you know, taking the rest days? But also, are you lifting weights? Because muscle building is important for your longevity and for your hormones. So you want to have muscle mass on the body to regulate your hormones. Um, it, there's just really no way around it. I mean, of course, if you are completely depleted and really exhausted and the stress has been massive on you, then there might be times when you need to take some time off. But generally speaking, if you're a, a, like a healthy person, then weightlifting should be part of your um, every week routine. Okay, 
Then the next thing is what kind of food are you eating? Because this, of course, has an impact on your hormones too. Are you eating good quality food? Are you eating a lot of packaged food, lots of processed foods? What are you really eating? And I like to tell everybody that eat most of the foods that come from nature, right? Uh, is this a plant? Is this an animal? Eggs? You know, these things are good, healthy foods. They come from nature. And most of your diet should look like this. If most of your diet looks like, you know, packaged foods and snacks and and drinks, like, uh, you know, high sugar foods, then this is not very healthy for your hormones. So we have to keep food quality in mind too. I feel like sometimes in the macro world, um, some people are only like, if, it, if it's your macros, then you can eat whatever. I disagree with this. I think most of the time you should be eating healthy food, but not restrict yourself heavily. So there's this like fine balance and I don't want to give it like percentages. Oh, it's 80, 20 or it's 90, 10 because some people get very, very strict with it. And they literally want to calculate like how many calories a day should can come from processed foods. And I don't want you to get so crazy with it um, to figure out like everything to tea, like how many grams can I eat? And does my bite of donut fit in there? Not this way, but just like, you know, most of your meals, right? Most of your meals should be coming from nature and the rest uh, then uh, come from, you know, whatever things that you like that is a little bit processed. I don't think there's a big problem there. So eating healthy foods most of the time would definitely keep your hormones um, happy. And then some other things are, you know, your, your spiritual health. Uh, are you feeling fulfilled and happy? Because this, if you don't, then this is also a major cause of stress. And I always say that what happens in your mind, what happens like inside, it's also reflected in your body. You can literally stress yourself out and create a bunch of stress hormones floating around in your body just from stressful thoughts alone. It's totally possible and have hormone imbalances if you uh, are always stressed out, even by your own thoughts that are cycling, uh, cycling, circulating in your head nonstop. It is, it is totally possible. So be mindful of that and see, you know, am I feeling good? Am I feeling fulfilled? Is there anything that can uh, improve in this area? Am I maybe only focused on work and I don't have time for, you know, feeding my own, like, you know, like nourishing my soul, maybe if you want to put it this way, because there has to be time and, uh, and room for that too. And then, one more thing uh, that can throw your hormones off, so to speak, we talked about a lot about like food and fitness, but also uh, exposure to chemicals. This is a big one. So make sure that you keep that low. There's a lot of endocrine disruptors out there, you know, like plastic and cooking your food in plastic, which you shouldn't do, like putting stuff in the microwave and cooking it, um, you know, the grocery store receipts, uh, things that you put on your body, skincare, cosmetics, they are high chemicals, tap water, right? So we want to make sure that we don't put these chemicals in our body. Not, I mean, nobody can completely avoid them, but they are um, considerable uh, endocrine disruptors and we have to be mindful of them. Like you don't have to take the receipt. I never take the receipt when I go to a grocery store. I'm like, no, thanks, I'm good. Uh, if I just need it, I don't know, Costco or something, you have to show the receipt at the door. Okay, fine. But then most of the time I'm not, I'm not taking it, uh, you know, drinking filtered water, um, using good quality skincare, I personally use beauty counter and making sure that, you know, the environment is as free as it is possible in our modern society from chemicals. So this is it, you know, really think about why are your hormones out of whack? Because they don't go out of whack just randomly, like, you know, oh, just, uh, you know, let's just change, let's just shift, let's, let's make her life really hard. But it's not like that. It's actually what you do with your lifestyle choices that determines how your hormones then respond. You can downregulate them. You can make them worse by chronic dieting, overtraining, being exposed to a lot of chemicals, not paying attention to how you're feeling like emotionally. You can make all that worse and you can make it better if you have a good lifting program, if you're eating enough food most of the time, you focus on nutrient density, to keep your environment as clean as possible from environmental toxins. Again, I know this is not always easy to do, but are you making an effort? So before you think you have to go to a doctor and get extensive testing, see what is your lifestyle like? Figure that out first. There are a lot of tweaks that you can make. I think everybody can make 
including myself. So uh, do that first, and that will tell you a lot why your hormones have been, so to speak, out of whack. But it doesn't mean that you can change, of course, things. You absolutely can, and this is what I work with a lot of people, uh, helping them to restore that balance because so many people are, in my audience, are over-dieted, over-stressed, don't know what to do, what the next step should be. So, of course, you know, food and then training is just one part of it, but I also uh, recommend other lifestyle changes so that they can get back to their normal health. So this is all. I hope you enjoyed this episode and it was informative and helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. And of course, I would really appreciate if you left me a review on iTunes and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. All right. Thanks so much. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye.